didn't see you there. Cheers. Pardon me, I wasn't expecting guests. I was just putting the finishing touches on my novel. It's about a girl who felt so strongly in what she believed in that she was willing to die for it. This girl left England with a convoy of people in hopes to escape religious persecution, only to be placed right back at the forefront of it once arriving in the Americas. The problem was that the church and the government were in unison. If you went against the church, you would be punished by the law. However, this was the case until this girl came along. Come along with me as we delve deeper into her story. This story is about Mary Doyer. She was born in 1611, London, England. In 1635, she moved to Massachusetts with her husband. The reason for this move was because the king increased the pressure on the Puritans. Mary Doyle met with her friend Anne Hutchinson to discuss the problems involving religious persecution in the colonies. Anne was banished for challenging the Puritan religion. Stop it, Hutchinson! You're banished from the colony! Mary followed Anne to Rhode Island. Once in Rhode Island, Mary's husband co-founded Newport. In 1652, Mary went on a political trip to England with her husband, John Clark, and Roger Williams. Once there, Mary met up with George Fox, the founder of the Society of Friends, other known as the Quakers. Mary decided then to become a Quaker. Mary Dyer moved back to Massachusetts as a Quaker. She was confronted with a plethora of new problems due to the fact that her religion was different than that of the Puritans. Because the governor knew they couldn't imprison people based on religion, they devised a new way to try to get rid of Quakers. They created laws that directly punished people for having Quaker books and for practicing the Quaker religion. Quaker, halt! Turn around! Heed these words. According to the new anti-Quaker law, if you are a Quaker, you will be punished. We will whip you, fine you, brand you, cut your ears and tongue off, and we will banish you. Mary decided to make a personal issue public when she intentionally broke the anti-Quaker law by marching from Providence to Boston to make a point. The day had finally come where Mary Dyer would be punished. Mary was executed on June 1st, 1660 for civil disobedience when she broke the anti-Quaker laws. Although, according to the Massachusetts records of executions, the real reason she was hanged was listed as other. Mary, you don't have to do this. You can stay in the Quaker and leave our colony, or if you choose to stay in our colony, you have to rejoin the Puritans. No, I won't give in! I'd rather die a Quaker and stand up for what I believe in. Then die a Quaker, you shall. Very dire, I sentence you to death. Even though Mary sacrificed her life, her legacy still lives on today. She was the reason for the laws changing that allowed freedom of religion. Three years after Mary's death, the Rhode Island Charter of 1663 granted religious freedom due to Mary's sacrifices. In 1791, the United States Constitution's Bill of Rights ensured that the church and the government's powers shall be separated in America. This allowed people in America, to this day, the freedom to worship or not worship any religion of their choice, all because of Mary Dyer. 
Thank you for tagging along today on this journey of Mary Dyer. Uh, maybe we can meet up for some fish and chips tomorrow around 2 o'clock. And uh, cheers. If you excuse me, I have to use the porcelain throne. You can use the structural functional approach to understand why Mary Dyer was executed. This approach is defined as a framework for building theory that sees society as a complex system whose parts work together to promote solidarity and stability. Right away, we know Mary Dyer broke this. She was not promoting solidarity and stability. Instead, she was acting against the norms and being deviant. Social structure is defined as any relatively stable pattern of social behavior. Mary Dyer broke the social structure of society because her religion was different than that of the Puritans. The Puritans did not like the fact that Mary and other Quakers were different than them. They created social dysfunctions, which are any social pattern that may disrupt the operation of society. Because of this, the Puritans executed Mary as a result of social functions, which are the consequence of any social pattern for the operation of society as a whole. The Puritans wanted everyone to be a Puritan, and the only way to do this was to get rid of the Quakers who were disrupting their idea of society. I learned from this assignment how unfair it is for people who are deviant in society and stand up for what they believe in. In order to change society, someone has to be willing to disrupt the normal flow of society and be deviant, otherwise no change will ever occur. Because of what Mary did, we can all enjoy religious freedom in the U.S. I also learned from this assignment that doing a long project is not that hard if you break it down into parts. Taking notes can be time consuming, but if you take your time and cite your sources, doing the rest of the assignment is very easy. The summary taught me how brave Mary Dyer was to give up her life and to stand up for something she believed in. Lastly, I learned the importance of using a bibliography as well as internal citations to properly give credit where credit is due.